pray that you will speak the word. Let the entrance of the word give life to everybody here. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to read responsively 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We read from verse 6. The brothers, can you stand? Can we read verse 6? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6. One to go. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Sisters, Maybe the sisters are, in, are not in church today. Are there sisters in church? You are reading from overhead projects. Instead of reading your Bible, one to go. Thank you, brothers. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye also having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Sisters? Brothers? Brothers, sisters, brothers, not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also. Sisters. Brothers, keep standing, everybody now. Shall we read verse 14 loud and clear? And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Can I have an amen? There is in you the grace of God. The grace for all sufficiency. Somebody say it with me. The grace for all sufficiency is in me. We're looking at all sufficiency. Sufficiency is in Christ. But the grace to possess it, where is it? Now, all sufficiency is in Christ. But the grace to receive that, that sufficiency, where is it? You need to quicken it. And may God grant you grace to quicken it in Jesus' name. You know, what, what you are today is what you sold in the past. Say it with me. What I am today is what I sold in the past. Now, there are various ways to sow. You sow with your word. You sow with your money. You sow with your labor. You sow with your strength. Whatsoever you are today is an indices, indication of where you were or what you sold in your life last year. For example, you are a medical doctor. Not because you are a medical doctor today. Did you become a medical doctor today? No. It's all the years of studies that qualified you to be a medical doctor. You are a teacher. Today, we call you a teacher. But all the years of studies made you a teacher. And I see somebody here having the sufficiency of God. I don't know if that person came to church. If that person came to church, put your hands together. Just let that person clap so I can hear him. Amen. So today we're looking at, we're going to look at the synopsis of this chapter we've read. Number one, in verse nine, it tells us you are what you are today, what you, you sold in the past or what you sold yesterday. That's why it says, but this I say unto you, which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. You become what you sow. Number two, your sufficiency is according to your purpose. Say it with me, my sufficiency. Is according to my purpose. Now, what you propose in your life determines your sufficiency. That's in verse 7. It says, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, 
So let him give. And since it is what you sow, you reap. So your purpose decides what you get, what you give, what you sow. And so if your sufficiency is according to your purpose. Daniel in chapter 1 verse 8 says that if Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with a portion of the, of the king's meat because he knew his God is able. The, the Hebrew children so proposed in their heart that they are not going to defile themselves with evil because they know the God is able. And they say to the king, we are not careful. Our God is able. So we see here and then also in verse 8. It says, God has the ability to make your purpose work in your life. Somebody say it with me. God has the ability to make his purpose to work in my life. Can I hear you say that again? God has the ability to make his purpose to work in my life. You see, because that's what the Bible tells us in verse 8. It says, and God is able. Somebody say, God is able. The grace is in me, and God is able to quicken that grace. Then number, verse 9, he says, grace for sufficiency is dispersed abroad. It is not limited because God has no, God is not partial. Somebody said God is not partial. God is not partial. Because our God is not a partial God, therefore he is dispersed abroad. Look at what the Bible says there. He says in verse 9, and it is written, he had dispersed abroad. He had, he had given to the poor. His righteousness remained forever. There is a dispersion. And it's you who keys in to disperse will win with God. You are sufficiency. Grace for sufficiency is dispersed abroad for everybody. Number nine. Verse ten, verse ten tells us money is a seed. I'm going to say money is a seed. Life is seed. Your life is a seed. And everybody is a victim of seed. Verse 10, it says, Now he that ministrates seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed. So now he's talking and, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Here he's talking about the seed. Now there is a lot of seed you can sow. I pray God will give you grace to sow your seed. And then also your prosperity causes you to thank God in verse 11. Verse 11 tells us, it says, Being enriched. In everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. You are sufficiency. You are prosperity causes people, causes you to give thanks to God. My prosperity will cause me to give thanks to God. It also causes others to thank God for me. Your success will also cause others to thank God for you. The Bible tells us in verse 12, it says, For the administration of this service not only supplied the, the want of the saints, but all but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. My life will give God thanks. I say my life will give God thanks. Your life will give God thanks. It shows also, verse, verse 13, shows your subjection to the gospel. Your prosperity, your sufficiency shows your subjection to the gospel in verse 13. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ. For your libera liberal distribution and unto them and unto all men. You see, you are, what you sh it shows you, your subjection to the gospel. And then finally, it activates your prayer life. Your success will quicken your prayer life. That's what we see in verse 14. He says, and being and by their prayer for you, which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. There is a grace in me and that grace will come to pass in Jesus' name. As we've looked at all this, you begin to think about all that we have talked about today. We are talking about the preambles to God's sufficiency. And I'm trusting God, these preambles will be made manifest in your life in Jesus' name. And these things we've read about, what you, what you are. Now I want you to say after me, what you are today, say it as if you're a believer. What you are today, okay, what I am today is what I have sold in the past. My sufficiency is according to the purpose of God. 
and my according to my own purpose. God has the ability to make my purpose to work in my life. Grace for sufficiency is dispersed abroad and I have part of it. Grace for sufficiency is dispersed abroad and I have part of it. My life is a seed. My money is a seed. My power is a seed. My labor is a seed. It will grow. It will increase in the name of Jesus Christ. Your prosperity causes you to thank God. My prosperity will cause me to thank God. My life will give God thanks. I said my life will give God thanks. It will show your subjection to the gospel. It will reveal my ability for the gospel, the power of gospel in me. Now we're going to go into the, this. We talk about the power. What about say power? Look at that verse again. In, in verse, um, your prosperity will show the power of God in your life. And I'm trusting God that power will come in your life in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. God is able. God is what? Able to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure they are and we are created. Our God is worthy. Somebody say our God is worthy. Say my God is worthy. Because your God is worthy, he is worthy to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Verse 12. Say, uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 I want you to think about God is worthy to receive glory, receive honor and power why? for he has created all things and everything is for his pleasure verse, uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory. I didn't hear you. And you will receive it. Now I want you to see here. The Lord received them. His worthy that was slain. So Jesus was slain to receive number one power. To receive number one power. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six, number seven. Now, I want you to, be, do you believe these seven packages are for you? And that grace is available. You know, many of us want the power. We want the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, we've got it. We, there is power of salvation. We've got it, John chapter 1 verse 12. It said, as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. You got that power. That's why you're here. Many of us at least. You are born again. But then also there is the power of the Spirit of God. You got it. The Bible tells us in John, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, As men, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Power of the Lord. And many of us can testify of that. If the power of God is there. Now, let's talk about the power of Christ. I don't know if that preacher can just follow us and let us get into this. Now, the power of Christ. The Bible talking about the power of Christ in Matthew chapter 28, verse 17. Matthew chapter 28, verse 17. He says, and when they saw him, they worshipped him. Some doubted. I pray you will not be one of the doubters. When they saw him, what happened? They worshipped him. But, listen, what I'm teaching today, some people will be here doubting it. When in the days of Jesus Christ, some people worshipped and some people doubted. So we cannot be in a better place than that. And I'm not a better teacher than Jesus Christ. But look at verse 18. In the midst of their doubt, in the midst of that, some people worshipping, in the midst of some people doubting. Can we read verse 18 together? And Jesus came and spoke unto them saying, And in earth. In the midst of some people doubting and some people believing, 
Jesus still said, all power is given unto me. Now, that means even when he said it, do you think everybody believed it? No. Listen, no matter whatever you, congregation you are in, there will be doubters. Amen? You know, there will be critics. But I thank God those critics didn't come to church today. Ask your neighbor, are you one of them? Are you a critic? Or are you a believer? So Jesus said he had all power. And then he said, all power is being what? Given unto me. So Christ's power is all encompassing. And look at what the Bible tells us in John chapter 3. John, sorry. In John chapter 3, verse 35. John chapter 3, verse 35. Talking about the power of Christ. The Father loved the Son and had given him... No, you're not there. John chapter 3, verse 35. The Father loved the Son and had given him... How many things? All things into his hand. All power has been given to me. If we add this scripture to the first one, who gave God, who gave Jesus all power? God. Is power among the things that has been given to Jesus? And who is your savior? Now I want you to think, think. I have a lot to say today, so I'm running a little bit. But I want to say this. Let's follow the sequence of the thoughts. <laughs> all power belongs to Je has been given unto Jesus. Now we know who gave him all the power. Now let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For ye know that, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that true, that though he was rich, yet for your sex he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. So you can see here that power and what we saw in Revelation that is worthy to receive how many fold blessings? Sevenfold. And it's the all things that was given to Jesus by who? By God. And Jesus said, and the Bible tells us here, he says, Ye, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor, so that what ye might through his poverty. So, in another way, Jesus was transferring the ability to be rich to who? To me. So, what he has received from the Father, he has transferred to you. And that's why the Bible tells us in, in First Corinthians, where we read the Second Corinthians chapter nine, he says that all the grace to receive it is within you. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Now, because of that, look, Christians can receive power to get wealth. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. I want to track this power. He says, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But thou sh shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee to get wealth, that he may what? Establish this kingdom which is swear unto thy fathers as it is. So what the Bible is saying is that it, you, if you want Jesus, had, uh, God gave the power to Jesus and Jesus wants to give the power to us. And but the Bible says it is God that given the power to get wealth. But you have something to do. What do you have to do in that verse? Look at that verse. But thou shalt, I want you to find your own responsibility. But thou shalt, verse 18. But thou shalt, but thou shalt, Romans, the Romans chapter 8, verse 18. But thou shalt, you shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get what. So what's your own responsibility? To remember the Lord thy God. You know, I was listening to one message and the man said something very, he was, he's a, a funny, a funny preacher. He said something very funny. He said, look at some people in church, that they are in church and they're saying, God, I want you to give me a car in seven years. He said, 
And my brother, that thing really broke my head. He said, God made the whole world in seven days. You ask him to give you a car in seven years. What an insult to God. Do you agree? The problem we have is we measure God by our own understanding. All you need to do is to remember. Somebody say remember. Remember God. So the power of Christ is all-encompassing. The power of Christ can be trans- has, it affects all things, as we see in John chapter 3, verse 35, and Christ wants to transfer that power to us, and it is God who gives us that power. My responsibility is to remember God. That's my responsibility. And I pray God will give you grace to remember God. I want us to finish that verse of Scripture. Let's go to verse 19. Over here, if you can help me. Verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 19. And it shall be, if thou shalt at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, everybody, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely... That's the scriptures. I'm not cursing you. If you decide to worship other gods... Which includes making money your idol. God wants to give you the power to get wealth. But if you decide to say no, or you get the wealth, and I want to worship other gods like Solomon. You know, one of the things that touches me is that Solomon built one temple for God. Guess how many temples he built for his wives? 1,000. Solomon used a few years to build the house of God, but spent 13 years to build his own house. Now, my brother, my sister, it is not Solomon's prosperity that made him what he became is his value. When you value things wrongfully, you will get the wrong thing out of it. How many of us have knife in our kitchen? If you have knife in the kitchen, put your hand up. Do you know that's, that's a weapon? Do you know that's a weapon? So you are all having weapons in your house. True or false? But how many of us know you need knife to cut your chicken? To cut your vegetable? How many of you knew? So is that knife cutting the vegetable a weapon? No. It's a useful instrument. It's a cutlery. Am I right? Please. I know you're cold. You're too cold to talk. You're not. No, you know, it's what you use for something for. That's what makes it what it is. Your child gets angry and goes to the kitchen and, and picks a knife. That knife at that time becomes a, a weapon. But mom is cooking, cooking and says, uh, Angelina, please go, bring me a knife to cut the vegetable. That knife becomes a cutlery. Still in the hand of the child, between mom and dad. So is the what you do with it? My prayer is that as God is shifting the church, I'm shifting. Are you shifting? As God is taking us to the prosperity level, you know the problem is some people are going to say, Pastor, hey, where am I? Like this preacher, he said some people are praying for one car. God, give me a car. Because they know how to set goals. Listen, my brother, remember, vision and vision and goals. Which one is bigger? Vision. Goals achieve targets. Vision achieve life. Amen? You know, there is good. It's good to set goals to achieve targets. But you don't, have, you don't set goals for your vision. Because if once you've achieved that goal, you get frustrated. But listen to me, my brother. I believe in goal setting. Even though I've never achieved any yet. But I have, I've seen something that vision works. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. You will not perish. So it's what we do with it. So we're going to look at the 12. That's what desires. And God says he's going to shake the world. But he will bring that glory to the house. 
And I'm praying God will help you that when this prosperity comes, it will help, enable us to shake the world. And we're going to shake our world in Jesus' name. Number three, solution to many things in life come through when prosperity comes. So as we still decide that, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 from verse 19. The Bible says, a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Money brings solution. My brother, my sister, there's going to be a lot of solutions. Now, if you go to the toilet today, would you hear this message? Yes. Any part of this building you are in, you will hear what we are preaching. If you go to the children's church, you will hear what we are preaching. And you hear the same quality, the same clarity. If you go to the tower, our tower, to do any work there, you will hear what we are preaching. What brought those solutions? Money. You know, before, when, uh, when the, uh, our brethren used to go to count the money, they wouldn't hear what we are preaching. They'll be there. And if there is anybody that says it's a witch, he goes to our toilet to go and hide. The, God, the power of the gospel will catch up with him. I thought I would have had an amen. So it, it brings solution. Number four, it's sent from God for his people. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, chapter 5, verse 19. Money is sent from God for his people. Look at this. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. Every man also to whom God had given riches. Who gave the riches? God. Riches and wealth. And had given him power to eat thereof. So it's a gift from God. It's sent from God. And to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is... So who gave... What's Prosperity. What's riches and what's riches? The gift of God. Are you going to receive the gift of God? Are you going to reject the gift of God? Somebody say, I receive it. The way some people do it, they are, God, they are so holy. Say, I receive it. It shall be yours in Jesus' name. Number five, it serves as a reward. Job chapter 36, verse 11. It serves as a reward. Every level there is reward. Resources, when you have labored for God, God will make you rich. Riches serves as a reward. Look at what the Bible says in Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey me, obey and serve me, and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. So if, my brother, my sister, I want you to begin to understand that prosperity is the will of God for you. Prosperity is, is, a, is a, a reward for your service. And if you are serving God and things are so tight on you, my brother, my brother, think about this. I, I want to want to provide this. Prosperity does not mean having a big car. Did you hear me? Prosperity does not mean, you know, I used to tell my children, I say I'm a rich man. Am I not a rich man? But even if you don't know, I'm telling you I'm a rich man. Hey, pastor, you're a rich man. You're dri- Look at the type of car you're driving. Don't worry. Are you feeding me? Am I coming to beg food from you? Since 1978, God gave me a, a vision that I shall not borrow. Since then, I knew I was a rich man. I was a student. And because I'm a rich man, I can't borrow. I have never borrowed from any human being on earth. Never. Well, yes, now and again, I may say, oh, oh boy, do you have uh, 10p there? Do you have 20p there? Because I want to solve a problem and don't don't have the cash. But it has never been to that level. Because I didn't become a rich man today. I've always been a rich man. Remember what you sow today? You're rich tomorrow. Say it. And I pray God will give you grace in the name of Jesus. It serves as a reward. And then number six, it saves the city. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. It will save your city. It saves the city. Now, there there was a found in it, a poor wise man. And he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered the same poor man. Did you hear that? This poor man was wise. But his wisdom 
did not bring him to memory. But then, look at what the scripture says in that verse. Let nobody remember the man. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised. And his words are not heard. So when you, if, if, the man, if, that wise, if that poor man was wise and rich, would he have been listened to? Yes. And maybe you are very wise. And the scripture is wise. Because the Bible tells us he that winneth soul is wise. The Bible tells us that by the foolishness of preaching, the world makes the world, the, the, world, the, the wisdom of the world is confounded. So that means we have the wisdom. And I'm believing God that this wisdom will speak. Because the riches of God will be added to it in Jesus' name. Number seven, it supports ministers. It supports ministers. So I'll quickly run through it. Number one, it spreads the gospel. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Number two, it shakes off the nations before Christ comes. It will shake the nations before Christ comes. Haggai chapter 2 verse 3 to 9. Number three, it gives solution to many things in life. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 19. Number four, it's sent from God for his people. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19. Number five, it serves as a re reward. Job chapter 36 verse 11. Number six, saves the city. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 15. Number seven, supports ministers. You know, I pray God will give us grace. To support our ministers, support our leaders, support the workers of, of the kingdom. And I'm trusting God that when we support one another, the, Lord, the work of God will be done very well. I want you to look at this. In Acts chapter 16, that was talking about Dorcas, a certain woman, a seller of purple, who in the city of Tytara, which worshipped God. That's, I'm reading Acts chapter 16 verse 14 now. And had us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which we are spoken by Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye be judged me a faithful to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Now, this woman dealt in purple. If you look at Acts of Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 19, you will discover that it was only the rich people that wore purple in those days. So as a result of that, you will kind of tell that this lady was a rich woman. And that's why she was able to ask the ministers to so say, come, you are not going to be staying on the roof, on the street again. Come and stay in my house. I pray God to give us grace. Make us prosperous so that we can support people. Support the work of God. You are going to support the work of God. Somebody say, I will. Say, I will. You know, I'm trusting God that ment our mentality will change. Stop thinking about Corona. Say to your neighbor, did you hear what Pastor just said? Look at our sister's testimony. Look, just imagine that testimony. She went to the lion's den and she came out safe. Somebody's next. I said, somebody's next. You are going to the lion's den. And you will come out safe. I say you are going to the lion's den. And you will come out safe. If that is you can have a louder amen. <laughs> you know. As big as, as our sister is. Now you know. She would have been thinking. Oh look at. This is the one that Corona eats very well. But you know our God. Whether you are small. Or big. Is your faith. Some of you here, if it was you. <laughs> Before you would have, that money, you would have fallen sick three times. Because you would have told, the, the, you would have phoned the, the hospital that you're having sick in your head. And phoned the, the client, I'm having sick, I'm sick in my stomach. And then <laughs> phoned your boss or your colleagues and say, I am sick all over my body. You know, just such a thing to hear that the GP is sick, the patients are sick, the staff are sick. The day that put their trust in God shall not be put to shame. Listen to me. Forget about Corona. If you keep calling it and it comes to you, this year, 
you are not under me. Because you are disobedient. I say forget about Corona. Stop calling it. And you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't take vaccine. If you have to take vaccine, please, ah, vaccine, there is nothing to antichrist with the vaccine. It's your decision. But I want to say that openly. It's nothing to do with the antichrist. So forget about the antichrist. That's not scriptures. You are still here. Are you still here? Okay, if you don't know about you, I'm still here. I don't know about, I say I am still here. So because I'm here, the Antichrist cannot show up. 666 will not come. Are you still here? Say to your neighbor, because I'm here, you can rest assured. That's not 666. I said, tell your neighbor, say, oh, you're not sure. Okay, now, tell your neighbor, say, pastor said. Okay, if, let's try the first one. Because I'm here, there is no 666. If you are still here, there is no, so forget about that. But you know what I want to, I want to wash out of our hearts is this attitude of, this mentality of corona, 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 corona. It's killing everybody. It's killing everybody. It's not killing everybody. You had our sister's testimony. Did it kill her? For one, more than one month, she's still here. You see, I am not saying we live a careless life. But don't let your life be ruled and controlled. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do. I would have learned a new skill if not for this corona. Pastor, I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Let me keep the money I have in my pocket just in case the bank collapse. And I can use it to at least feed myself for one month. You know, there is a lot of rubbish going out there. And that's what I want us to forget about. In this season, you are going to prosper. Okay, I don't know about you. I said, I am going to prosper. I am going to prosper. You know, I've come, read, read anything you, you want to read. Read biographies. People, success, people have always succeeded more during recession. Did you hear me? Because all you just need is God to give you an idea. But if you keep thinking, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> you will die. Is that person who is going to die here? Where is that person? He didn't come to church today. <laughs> He's not online. Those of you online, you will not die. They are not online. They are not along with us. Amen? So let's not be emphasizing on corona. Let's not let our lives stand still because of you just sit down. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I will die tomorrow. You will not die. You will live to declare the glory of God. So we can serve him. He serves the city and then supports the ministers. Then, and then number eight, supply the needs of the poor. Acts chapter 20. When, why you need to prosper is that it will supply the needs of the poor. Acts chapter 20 verse 34. Yea, ye yourselves know that these things have ministered unto me my necessities and to them that were with me I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak we are going to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive Number nine, so we can fear him. We need to prosper so we can fear God. My brother, my sister, when you prosper, fear of God becomes real. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 39. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 39. Then hear thou in heaven, in thy dwelling place, and forgive, so we, and, and forgive, forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou, only knowest the hearts of all the children of men, they, that they may what? Fear thee all the days. All the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto them. I pray God to give us grace. Then number 10, prove that my substance 
honors God. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, verse 9, it says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first, and with the first fruit of thy increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty. My barns shall be filled with plenty. I say my barns shall be filled with plenty. Whose barn is going to be filled with plenty? Your barn will be filled with plenty in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us, number 11, it says God is the one who sends prosperity. Psalm 118 verse 25. God is the one who sends it. If God sends something to me, am I going to reject it? Should you reject it? No. But you see, in Psalm 118 verse 25, the Bible says, Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now. God will send it. I said, God will send it. Now, number 12, send thanks to God. God will give you prosperity so that you give him thanks. Can I have an amen? So that's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. You know, my brethren, my sister, my brother, I believe this, that this year is year you will prosper. Okay, I will prosper. You will prosper. And everything you do, it will help us to spread the gospel. It will help us to shake the nations before Christ returns. It will help us to give solutions to many things. It will help us to send ministers, to send, it is sent from God. Therefore, I can't reject it. It serves as a reward. It saves the city. It supports the ministers. It, it supplies the needs of the poor. So we can fear him. And I believe you will fear him. I said you will fear him. It proves your, subs your substance honors God. Your substance honors God. And God sends prosperity. S prosperity is a gift from God. Therefore, I cannot reject it. Did you hear me? I said prosperity is a gift from God. Therefore, I will not reject it. And I'm trusting God. Now, listen to this. In, in, closing, in closing this session, I want to say a few things here. <laughs> Propellers of prosperity. What are the things that propels prosperity? In the life of every child of God. Very briefly, I'll just say a few things about that and we'll, go, we'll close. What are the pro propellers? Number one is sincerity, sincere heart to help others. When you have a sincere heart to help others, my brother, my sister, money will come. The problem is many of us are so selfish, so self-centered. If there is a sincere heart to help people, you have a heart to say, God, help me to help people, others. If you have a sincere heart, look at what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Chap 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, the both ministered bread for the food, and multiply your seed, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Sincere heart to, to help others will, will bring God's blessings. Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. I saw this scripture, my heart went. The king had a dream. And God said to, that, to the king, King, you are about to die. The only way you can elongate your life is in Daniel chapter 4 verse 27. It says, We are for O king. Let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Break off thy sins by, by what? By righteousness and thy iniquity by showing mercy to the poor. If we learn to show mercy to the poor, my brother, my sister, your life will prosper. Not showing it, I gave uh, my brother Neil, I gave him five pounds. And he just, he just took it. And then walked away. He didn't even say thank you. <laughs> you will get another one. Is that giving to the poor? Because Why? Why did I give him? I actually gave him because I wanted him to say thank you. And then, and I was watching him. He went to just the sister. He didn't even point at me. Or let's even say I gave him a jacket. Ronnie, I gave you that jacket you're wearing. Oh, he said thanks. You shouldn't have said thank you. Now, when he went to that sister... And the sister says, oh, look at your jacket. It's, not, it's so nice. <laughs> she says, thank you, my sister. That's very nice. 
And he didn't point at me. And I overheard when he said, that's very nice. Thank you. He didn't, you'll get another one tomorrow. Is that how to give to the poor? No. You know, even if he say, he was trying to say thank you, just, I just walk away. And if I see Sister Beauty trying to beautify her, his jacket, and say, oh, yeah, but I would not, would I be paying, paying my ears to hear? No. You see, we must develop an attitude to help the poor. That's what the Bible tells us. Look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. There is that scattered and yet increased, and there is that who withhold it more than his meat, but it le tended to poverty. You know, if we give, have a spread hand, prosperity will come. If you want prosperity to come to you, begin these things I'm teaching today. Number three. Number two, seeking the, king, the kingdom spirit. Matthew chapter 6, verse 3. If you seek, seek ye first the kingdom, and all, and all these things shall be what? Added to us. Brethren, let's have ment seek the kingdom mentality. Prosperity will come. This church, you will prosper. Any member of this church, you will say, Pastor, I will prosper. Clap your hand and say, I will prosper. Clap your hand and see if I'm prospering. Amen. You will prosper in Jesus' name. Seek the kingdom. Number four, three, seeing tithing as a responsibility. Deuteronomy 26. I want to read this scripture. I don't have it, please follow me. Deuteronomy 26, verse 12. From verse 12. And I want you to follow this. See tithing as a responsibility. Always find a way to pay your tithe. Always see it as something that must be done first. Look at what the scripture says. Deuteronomy chapter 26. I'm reading this scripture because I saw it first yesterday. My eyes went, wow. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 12. When thou hast made an end of tithing all the tithes of thine increase in the, the third year. You see, your tithe, you tithe what? All your tithe of the all your increase, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levites. The stranger, the, you gave it to the Levites, you gave it to the stranger, you gave it to the fatherless, you gave it to the widow, and they, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say to the before the Lord thy God, everybody. I have brought away the hallowed things out of mine house and also have given them unto the Levite and unto the stranger and to the fatherless and to the widow according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed. I have not transgressed by thy commandments. Neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten that thereof in my Morning, neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean. You see, what he was saying is, if you give your tithes, pay your tithes, then you have a mouth to talk to God. You know, one, one of the things I wish I could really bring home, this teaching, and I think I'll try and bring it home another day. One sister, one lady touched my heart very well. And you know, sometimes you see, I learned from everybody. So this lady gave her landlord. Now what happened is there was a contract. The lady was to move into a, a, a room. And the lady get, paid her tenant, her landlord, the money. And then, eventually, she didn't like the room. She said the landlord should give back the money to her. And when, she, when I came across her, she told me, and I said, that's wrong. Because the landlord, you signed the contract. The landlord gave you the, te the tenancy. You agreed. You viewed the room. Therefore, it is wrong. You have paid it. He has no right to give you back. You know what the lady told me? They that do know their God, they shall be strong. He said to me, Pastor, I am a tither. I pay my tithe. My money cannot be devoured. Hey! I shook. And then, with all the knowledge I have about tenancy, about properties, about this thing, I shook. And when she said that, she said it again, she said, I am a fighter. 
I pay my tithe. I do not owe God. Therefore, no devourer has a right to eat my money. My sister, the next day I saw her, she told me, Pastor, I told you I'm a tither. I said, what happened? He said, the landlord had to give me back my money. No fighting, no argument. You know, if you know you are right with God, look, that's what the scripture is saying. If you pay your tithes regularly and faithfully, you have a mouth to face God. And I want to challenge any one of you that's paying your tithe. Don't always pay tithe with grudge. And don't pay it like uh, we do. Or sometimes you drop it there. They say, drop it. You take it to God and say, God, I am giving this. I am. Now, I want to ask you. If you come to buy this microphone from me, and you pay me for the microphone, and I'm holding the microphone, what would you do? Tell me. Good. Take it from me. Ask me for it. And if I don't give it to you, what do, you, what do you expect me to do? Give you back your money. You see, some of us, we, we give your tithes to God. Although that's a debt. When you pay it, it gives you a right to say, God, this gives me a right for my prosperity. Amen? So you must pay your tithe with an expectation. And everything you give to God, you must give it with what? expectation and God will reward you. You know, I'm praying God as you are going to pay your tithes after this now, you're going to be giving to the poor, you're going to give to the needy, you're going to give to the work of God. You don't give as if the church is beggars. If you look at a person like me, you say I'm a beggar. You know, the, the, the amount of money you have, look at some people here have much more than that. So you don't give God as if God is a beggar. He owns everything. Amen? But then also, don't give God with this attitude of, I just give you. I have to pay it so that you don't kill me. And again, don't give God as if God is a killer. Do you understand? You don't give God as if God is a beggar and don't give God as if God is a killer. And you know, sometimes, I don't want you to kill me, God. Take, take. Take. It's just like a uh, ransom. You know, when, when you have been uh, kidnapped, they give you, they say pay ransom. Do you pay with joy? If you have to pay, or you, you will not pay with joy. You want to just pay, please take, take. You can even kneel down for them. But as soon as they release your own person, <laughs> you speak, <laughs> you, 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 say, you say something to them, which I cannot say on the pulpit. True or false? Don't give to God like that. But also, don't give to God as if he's, he's, he's not a tyrant. He's a father. I say he's a father. You know, when my children buy me a gift, and thank God they do. And by the way, this watch I have, they bought it for me. You know when they bought it for me? They said, Dad, wear it. Let me see. Do you like it? Are you happy? And then, when I say I'm happy, they need something from me. Now, you know, that's the relationship we should develop with our God. Amen? Amen? We should develop a relationship with God. And when you give to God, you are expecting God to give you something. As a father and a daughter. As a father and a son. Amen? You don't owe God. God will not owe you. I haven't got time to, read, to finish all that. So, we must see tithing, seeing tithing as a responsibility. Number four, saving the seed. Shall you say it together? Saving the seed. Say it with me. Save the seed. The Bible tells us God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. That means there is bread and there is seed. There is bread and there is seed. If you eat the seed because you are hungry, will God bless anything? He will ask you, what do you have in your house? So we must save. Everyone says save. You know, if you are any hundred pounds, my brother, my sister, you can save. Even if it's one pound. Just have a principle that every month I must save. Save something. Listen to this. If you are any hundred pounds every month and you decide to save 10, 10 pounds every month, at the end of the year, how much do you have? 1,000. If, 
you serve it, I mean, 120 pounds, yes. So you, you have now automatically become a hundred, hundred, hundred near. That's, that's the beginning. Over 10 years, you become a Tanzania. And then by multiplier effect, before you become 20 or before you become 50, I'm telling you, if you continue it, you might end up becoming a millionaire. Do you understand? So if you say, ah, look at me, today I'm a penny near. Just start saving the pennies. Very soon, you become a penny near. And then from penny near, you're going to become a hundred near. And very soon, you become a thousand near. And eventually, you become, you don't know what you'll become next. And after a millionaire, you join the choir to sing, I'm a billionaire. I'm a B. But brethren, we must, we must form a habit of saving. And when we talk about saving, you can do various types of savings. You can just put it, at one couple told me, a couple in the church, they told me, Pastor, my bank is like a pit. Any money that goes there, they take it because I'm, I'm, I misbehaved. So what they decided to do is they, they bought a big piggy bank in the house. And they, <laughs> some people, you can do anything. They took the key and misplaced the key. And so they were putting all the money inside the piggy bank. So I don't know whether it's the wife or the husband that threw away the, money, threw away the key. So every month they put some money inside the piggy bank. I don't even know whether they knew where the key is, but they just pretended as if they don't know. But at the end of the year, they went to the piggy bank and they did a ceremonial something to, to break the piggy bank and they found a lot of money inside it. If you decide to save, you can save. So number one, propellers of prosperity. Number one, sincere heart to help others. Everyone say it with me. Number two, seeking God's kingdom. Seeking the, the spirit, kingdom spirits. Every, what, let's say it together. Seeking kingdom spirits. Number three, seeing Titan as a See tight as a responsibility. And then number four, save the seed. Don't eat your seed. Young people, please stop eating every money you have. Put some away. Amen. I'm in this country today because when I was earning 250 naira a month, I was putting something away. Fine. He said, Pastor, what did you do with it? Somebody needed it. I just took him to the bank and gave him almost everything. Now, has it not multiplied? Yes, that's why I'm here. And you are even enjoying it. Amen. Thank you, my sister. I think I'm going to bring my, bro my friend who brought me here to, to, for you all to come and kneel down for him. I say, thank you, brother. Do you understand? All I'm trying to say is, church, listen, saving is good. Somebody says saving is good. Save the seed. Don't eat the seed. Lack, lack of saving. I want to read Job chapter 20 verse 19 because I, I want to read Job 20 verse 19 because this is very important. I know our time is gone, but I just want to quickly read. It says, because he had oppressed and had forsaken the poor, because he had violently taken away and house which he builded not surely. Verse 20. Shall we read verse 20 together? Oh God. Verse 20. Want to go? Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save that which he. You see, lack of saving is an evidence of a curse upon your life. If you don't save, try, do your best to save. Everyone say, I will save. Now look at this. It says, verse 21 says, Therefore, there shall none of this meat be left. Therefore, shall no man look for his goods. You see, that's the thing. If you don't save, it's dangerous. I pray you will save. Number five. Sowing back seed. Say it with me. 
sowing bad seed in investment, in investment. Do not eat your seed. Sow back the seed. There is seed and there is bread. Do not eat your seed. Say, my brother, I will not eat my seed. Say, pastor, I will not eat my seed. You know, but every year try and get the seed. I'll end up with this story. You know, when we were young, <laughs> there was something my parents used to do. When they dig yam, they will take the yam and then give us who we'll eat. And then they will put some in the band. And the, the thing will be drying there. And sometimes we will go to as children, we say, Dad, look at the one in the band. Why don't you bring it so that we can eat it? The children say, the dad will say, no. What is that one? The seed. But I, I will be crying. My dad will go and buy yam outside when there is yam in the barn. So the one in the barn is called the, the one he went to buy is called the bread. I pray God give us a habit of not eating our seed. I didn't hear your amen. You see, seed sown will be multiplied. If you sow your seed, it will multiply. If you eat your seed, it will die. Amen? Saving. So that would mean after you've saved, you find a way to invest it. Find a way to put it, do, make it to work for you. Like our brother told us last week, he says, money works for us tirelessly. As we're concluding this series on prosperity, I don't know what you've learned. I don't know what you have gained. I don't know what you are doing with it. Or are we going to teach it again next year? You'll see where you are. God forbid. Somebody say, God forbid. I will change. Stand up on your feet. I, want you, I don't know what you've learned today. But I want you to know this. It was in David's heart to build God's kingdom. What was in his heart manifested. What is in your heart will come to pass. Amen. I want you to tell the Lord and say, Lord, help me. That I will be a man. That will, Lord, I will be sincere to seek the help, to help others. I'll have a heart to help people. I'll have a heart to seek the kingdom of God. I'll seek the kingdom of God. I will see tithing as a responsibility. I will save my seed. I will sow back in investment. I will put plants back. I will not eat everything I have gotten. And even though we are saying giving, giving, be, be, give, be generous. Don't give your seed. Don't give your seed. Don't, seed is for planting. Tell the Lord to help you. That all we have learned will be a fruit in your life. That all that we have, has been taught will make a sense in your life. And that the purpose of marriage will be fulfilled in your life. I mean, the purpose of prosperity will be fulfilled in your life. Whatever is in your heart will come in your hand. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Now, what we're going to do, amen, before we finish our prayer, after this service, it's not for everybody. Because I know some of you already know where you're going, so you're happy with where you're going. You're happy with what you're doing with your money. But some, of, some people are asking me, Pastor, what are we going to do to move this series forward? So what I have decided is, after the service, I want to see some people at this section. Those who want to help, you need help. Either to know more how to invest your money, you have money already, you want to know how to invest it. Or you want to learn new skills to improve yourself. Or you want to learn stock, stocks and shares. Or you want to learn more. There was something that was said during the seminars that you wish to know more. What we want to do is this. What I, is to, to get in, us into smaller groups of like-minded people. So that, that like-minded people will sit together, talk together, and we will then blow up our minds with ideas. With ways to make it. And I'm trusting God. Every one of us will make it. So, those of us, by the grace of God, you know where you're going. You don't think you need prosperity and or Not that you don't need prosperity, but you know where you're going. You don't need any more ideas. You know where you're going. You can go home. But those of us who wants to wait to say, Pastor, I really need understanding. 
in one area or the other of what was taught during the weekend, last weekend. I want to know more. You're going to wait a little bit and we're going to have a meeting and we're going to talk together. Is that all right? Is that all right? It's not for everybody. But please, whether you're meeting there or wherever we're meeting, please let's still observe the social distancing. Is that all right? Let's pray. I want you to begin to talk to God and say, God, here I am. I don't want to end my life without being, being able to be useful. I want to be useful for you. I want to be eventful for you. Let's talk to God.